A life expectancy of five years, 10 years, 20 years, mankind has never in its history stored so much information on such fragile media. Will we be able to store our digital memory for more than a century, let alone several millennia? This question has already arisen in certain sectors that have already started to archive sensitive data. ANDRA, the French National Radioactive Waste Management Agency, stores thousands of barrels filled with more or less active nuclear waste in its storage sites and concrete blockhouses. Each barrel is marked with a barcode, identifying the digital file that contains the data vital to the site's archives. In order to contain the dangerous radioactivity, the barrels must be stored securely for 300 years. Where will digital technology be in three centuries? Will a system capable of reading our current media still exist? There's really no issue with digital per se. The problem is that it's a kind of endless screw that we're not sure we can keep turning ad vitam aeternum, because digital often changes standards, becoming increasingly compact. For example, those 5-inch floppy disks we used 20 years ago, you can't find a single machine to read them today. So you have to migrate your files to new media, maybe even with new software every 10 years. And this endless screw, it's hard to be able to guarantee that in 1,000 years we will have been able to keep it turning. So we will have to develop parallel solutions to make sure that in the long term, data is transmitted where we want it to be. What media was therefore selected to back up digital methods and offer fairly reliable, secure storage to withstand this test of time? Andra opted for old friends, paper and ink. Today, we have permanent paper without any added bleaching chemicals. They do not deteriorate over time. The data is printed using acrylic ink that is extreme in the long term. The paradox is instructive. Over the period of a century, digital does not compare with paper, which we have had since ancient times. The most radioactive waste requires another time scale. ANDRA intends to bury, at great depths, the radioactive materials that will only stop being a risk in 500 years, and for some, 5,000 years. Throughout this entire period, we need to know where they are buried in the storage conditions at all times. A solution appeared while excavating the 1,400 meters of galleries for the underground laboratory. For very long-term memory, if we think in terms of many millennia, one of the ideas we are exploring is to use what we call dump sites. In other words, areas where we place the material excavated from underground. Geologically speaking, this material should not be found in the places where it will be. And we are thinking of placing within these dump sites a certain number of inscriptions on media that are currently under study to explain to future archaeologists, future geologists, why this geological material is in a place it shouldn't be, thereby indicating the existence of a storage site. Ander is still researching a digital media that is sufficiently strong and stable enough to be placed inside these dump sites to indicate to future generations the presence of nuclear materials buried deep underground. Perhaps they should look to the civilizations that sent us messages engraved in rock a very long time ago. These would be, for example, the hieroglyphs from ancient Egypt. Once again, the past is guiding us toward the future.
we now have a mineral that is heat and acid resistant that can withstand radio waves. It may not be indestructible, but in any case, it is far stronger than any stone obelisk. It is quartz. In Japan, engineers at the Hitachi Laboratories, partnered with Kyoto University, have been working with quartz, trying to create the most stable digital storage medium ever created. They must, however, discover a way to overcome the extreme resistance of this rock crystal. We began our research in 1996, when the Miura Laboratory discovered that a laser could modify the structure of quartz. We then studied the possibility of using this technique for long-term data storage. I am now going to record data on this sliver of quartz. The data is recorded by a femtosecond laser. This laser emits pulses of around one billionth of a second. The pulse creates perfectly formed microscopic dots. A dot for zero and a no dot for one in binary code. Dozens of dots can be recorded at once. The information is embedded in the layers and it is therefore unaffected by dust or scratches. Another advantage of quartz, the transparency means that the information can be read by any microscope. To conserve digital data for long periods, we cannot always rely on a reader to access information. If CD players were no longer manufactured, for example, it would become difficult to retrieve any data. With this technique, we can access the data using a traditional optical microscope. We could easily read the information even in a distant future. What time frame? 100 years, 500 years, 1,000 years, 10,000 years? To test the strength of this medium, a slice of quartz is placed in an oven heated to 1,000 degrees. Two hours later, the slice and the embedded data are intact. It also withstands thermal shock when it is thrown into water at ambient temperature. An acid bath has no effect on it. We determined that the life expectancy of the data we embedded on the strips of quartz is extremely long, from 300 million to several billion years. We could therefore store data reliably and safely for extremely long periods. What is still an experimental procedure looks to be extremely promising. One major hurdle that remains is a limited storage capacity. For now, it is barely greater than that of Blu-ray technology.